practice with some loans. Camilla has finally found a house she adores. Good job, Camilla. Way to go. The cost of the home is $210,000, which she intends to purchase on a 30-year fixed mortgage. Blinded by her adoration for the property, she agrees to a 5.5% interest rate. And that's kind of high for a house. It's going to cost her a lot of money anyway. If the bank requires 15% down, what will her down payment be? Well... It's 15% of the purchase price, which is $210,000. So, 0.15 of means multiply. And when you multiply, it's $31,500. So, Camilla's going to withdraw $31,500 from her savings account, because don't we all have that in our account? And she's going to pay that on her, on the house. So, before I even read this problem, if the house is $210,000 and she's putting thirty-one five dollars down... That means she needs to borrow $178,500, just FYI. Okay, so in this part B, what would Camilla type into Excel to figure out her monthly payment? Okay, so let's start with that. We're trying to find her monthly payment, so that would be PMT. Interest rate, well, it said that she's doing a 5.5% interest rate. We'll divide it by 12. She's doing 30 years. And she's borrowing $178,500, right? If you type that into Excel exactly like you see it, maybe without the curvature, it's going to tell you that her monthly payment is $1,013.50. And that right there makes me want to cry. I can't imagine having a house payment like that. But that's just me. Okay. I'm sure it's a beautiful home. And maybe if I had somebody to pay the bills with me, that'd be different. Okay, so... What will the total of all Camilla's payments be over the lifetime of the mortgage? Well, if she's paying $1,013.50 per month, 12 months in a year, 30 years in the mortgage, that means she's going to pay $364,860 over the life of the loan. I hope you're understanding she didn't borrow near that amount, right? How much will she pay in interest? Well, she her payback is 364,860. She borrowed 1785. The difference between what you bar what you paid back and what you borrowed is the interest. So when you subtract those, you get $186,360. She paid more in interest than she paid for the house. She could have bought two houses for the cost, for the price of the interest. I mean, that's just crazy. It's just crazy. Now, if Camilla would have just not been so lazy and would have walked her happy little fanny across the street, there's a bank that would have offered her a 4.25% on the 36 mortgage. Now, you might be thinking, well, 5.5%, 4.25%, it's only 1.25%. Yeah, but it's for 30 years and she borrowed $178,500. That's a lot. So, in Excel, we would have typed in PMT, 0 0.0425 divided by 12, 30 times 12, and again, she borrowed 178.5. So, if you type that into Excel exactly like you see it, she would have paid $878.11 per month. Now, that I could do. That doesn't seem nearly so bad. I think it's the... The $1,000 mark, that is a little bit stressful. Okay. So how much would she have saved over 30 years if she would have signed with the lower rate? Well, if she was paying eight seventy eight eleven dollars for 12 months a year for 30 years, her total payback would have been $316,119.60. Still a lot of money, but... In the other one, she would have paid back 364860 That was our answer for letter C. And if she would have went with this bank, she would have paid back 316 A difference of $48,740.40. And this is one where you can see the money right away. Because it's the same, same years in the mortgage. The difference is every month. She's paying, you know, $150 less every month. So that's extra money in your pocket right away. So you kind of want to pay attention to 
um, you know, shop around for interest rates because different banks will give you a different interest rate. All right, and the second one. The president of the U.S. makes $400,000 annually. While still in office, the president's family has decided to purchase a home that has an estimated property tax. Okay, wait, that's how much he makes. Property tax of $50,000, home insurance of $15,000 annually. Let's assume the president's family has no loans or debt, and they've saved $35,000 for a down payment. Okay. So what mortgage, monthly mortgage payment can they afford? So we've got to figure this out based off of our total expense ratio. So 36% of our gross monthly income. Well, we know the annual income. So we will take our 400,000 annual income and divide it by 12. We're going to subtract our house, our monthly housing expenses. So $50,000 for property tax plus $15,000 for insurance. And again, we divide those by 12 because they gave it annually and we need monthly. Now, there are no other debts, no student loans, no credit card, no whatever. So we've got a zero there. And then, um, so when I figure this out, this first part is $12,000. This second part is $5,416.67. So when I subtract those, they can afford a monthly payment of $6,583.33. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me, right? Like, I wish I had that money, much money coming in in a month, let alone going just to pay for the house payment. Okay, letter B. So, if they can afford a $6,583.33 monthly payment, how much of a mortgage can they afford? So, now we're using present value, present value of the home, at a fixed rate of 3.25% divided by 12, 12 months in a year, 30 years in the mortgage, um, the interest, uh, we can afford a $6,583.33. If you type that in, it's going to give us the uh, monthly rate, excuse me, the present value of the home at $1,512,691.73. That's a decimal point. So that's the mortgage they can secure based off their annual income. Now, so what's the maximum housing price they can afford? And you're like, well, I just said that. Well, no, this is how much they can borrow. Remember, that's a decimal point, they saved $35,000 for the down payment. So if you add in the down payment, they can look for a house that's $1,547,691.73. That would be the maximum housing price they can afford um, with their current situation.